Coogan's dropping new baits, and today we're taking a look at them. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you can tell, today we're talking about Guggen's new crappie baits. So let's go ahead and dive into these things. So Guggen has decided to drop a brand new lineup of crappie baits for their soft plastic lineup. Now if you guys are interested in picking these things up, they will be available at GuggenSquad.com and you can get over there and use my affiliate code to save 10% off your purchase and also helps me out a little bit as well. And I'll leave that link below in my description. But let's go ahead and talk about these brand new crappie baits and the colors that they are going to be busting out. There are going to be five new baits and six different colors in this lineup of soft plastic crappie baits or panfish baits, whatever you want to call them. So the first bait we'll take a look at is this bumpkin bug. The bumpkin bug is a two inch bait which looks very similar to that bandito bug presentation. Next we'll have the dangle dart. This is a two and a half inch bait and as you may be able to tell, it does resemble that larger Guggen dart, just in a smaller bite size. After that, we have the Snacky Swimmer in a two and a half inch and a two inch. This resembles the Saucy Swimmer very closely in my opinion, and should work very well on multiple species, both in fresh and salt water. Now, the color that I actually have right here in front of me is that Money Milk, which is one of their newer colors. I actually haven't seen this, and honestly, this thing looks amazing. It's got a blue pearlescent to it. It's got that peppery black flake, and then just that white uh, kind of natural look as well. So this, I think, will work excellent in both fresh and salt water for multiple species and uh, you know almost any time of the year to be honest so and in comparison to that two inch there's not a lot of uh, length difference it's mostly the beefiness of the bait it does get a lot slimmer so this works well if you're going to be trying to target panfish versus crappie you have a little bit of a smaller bait you can choose and last but not least guys probably my favorite bait of them all the chubby grubby now this thing comes in at 1.75 inch and it's a grub style bait that kind of resembles the mondo worm in some shape and sorts. Uh, really just the way the tail kind of curls out and kind of has that same design. Other than that, it's very unique in its own shape and size and I think it'll work very, very well for panfish or creek fishing this year. Now all these baits will be available in six colors, Electric Chicken, Pro Red Blue, Money Milk, Natural, Toxic Waste, and Black Jack. Each pack will come with 10 to 12 baits depending on the size and bait itself. Now if you ask me, my two favorite baits out of all these are going to be that little bumpkin bug and that chubby grubby. And as far as colors go, I think this toxic waste looks amazing. Definitely will work very, very well in the stained water that we have here in Texas. And then just another proven color that I love is electric chicken. It's always worked very, very well in creeks for me. For bass, for panfish, for crappie, for catfish, really anything in our creeks here in Texas, they will bite this electric chicken color. I don't know what it is about it, but it works very, very well but now that we've talked a little bit about these baits you know where to get them and enough about them let's get out there on the water and see what these things are all about well guys we just pulled up to the first spot that I was gonna fish today and it is completely drained and like ruined I'm not sure if the city is just taking all the water out of this spot but it used to be one of my favorite bluegill spots and uh, now it's just this I think that there is some fish in this tunnel right here though I'm gonna grab my lure and my rod, all that stuff. We're gonna try it out just to see what is in this pond, uh, in this little puddle actually. And then I'm probably gonna have to come back in another video and do a rescue mission because I don't want these fish to die. Like I said, this is one of my favorite spots and there's loads of awesome bluegill and even bass in here. So I don't want these guys to die and suffer and uh, you know dry out like this. So I'm gonna try to see if there are fish active in this pond. And then once I get a good idea, maybe just catch one, we'll head out to another spot and then we'll come back and do a rescue mission at this spot. So if you guys want to see that rescue mission, make sure you check out the channel in the future. Let's grab our longer ultralight setup just so that way I can get over the edge and not have to spook these fish. I'm gonna rig this thing up real quick on this 16th of an ounce jig head. I'm gonna go with the toxic waste color. I feel like this will stand out in this overcast that we have going on today. We'll go straight. There we go. That thing looks good, man. Everything kind of matches on this setup. Look at that, that chartreuse and black. Whew. This is the matching setup. All right, now I'm just gonna drop it straight down from this edge. I'm gonna have to try to find a way in the future to block this channel off or, or figure out what the heck we need to do to get these fish out of here. Cause I know there's loads of good sunfish, bass, bluegill. Uh, there's turtles in here there's 
um, warmouth. There's a ton of different types of sunfish in this little creek for some reason. I think it's just one of those natural runoffs where they just all get to. Oh yeah, we're already getting hammered. So they're definitely right underneath us. I ain't got much. Uh, oh, we had something. I couldn't set the hook very well from this angle. I'm going to change the angle of the dangle so we don't lose them. I don't really have anywhere to go, so they should be right in this area. Someone's hammering it. What is it? Oh, it's just a little tiny bass. You see, this place is loaded with bass like this. There's no way we can let these guys die. I'd be so sad. I feel like I want to, like, take this guy home right now, and there's no way for me to take him home or transfer him. Pop him back in. All right, guys, off to the next spot. If you guys want to see me do a rescue mission, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we'll be back here in the future, and we'll definitely be trying to save these fish from this tiny little drying out canal. So off to the next spot. All right, guys, we officially got out here to our next spot. Good little sunfish that usually hang out under this bridge, but with it being so much colder, I don't think they're going to be in this bridge. I think they'll be more in this grass line. So we'll head towards that grass line over there, fish it up, and see what we can get going. All right, I think that this chartreuse color is going to work excellent in this overcast weather though i'll tell you that much this line out here we'll just try to fish this grass line oh we already got hit just like that first gas boys yeah i think we're in the right spot <laughs> let's just fish this pretty slowly with it with it being a bigger bait only the bigger fish are going to be able to take it not these little ones in the middle of it so we'll see which one of these guys takes it takes it for reals this is going to be a good durability test because There'll be a bunch of little guys and big guys picking at it. I'm just gonna leave it out there until something kind of walks off with it. So they're hammering it. Look at that. Oh, they're hammering it so good, man. Just need these to take it. Don't just hit it. Take it. Just working this real simple, giving it some hops. I have it on a uh, a swing head swing little knot if you guys aren't familiar with that basically whenever you pop the line it allows that jig head to move a little bit freely it works a lot better for vertical jigging on brush piles and little bridges and docks and stuff like that which is what i was kind of planning on doing at that first spot but unfortunately it did not work because it was drained out so oh goodness oh yeah that is a nice sunfish right there let's get them up boys that is what we're after look at that beautiful beautiful colors on that sunfish super cold right there too very cold fish look at that munch that thing completely let's get him unhooked get him back in the water i know that there's some other big guys in there if this guy's in there see you later buddy he just got <laughs> he fell flat to the ground and just stayed there like a pancake name that guy pancake what was all that about never seen that before on a release that was the worst release i've ever done just pancaked himself all right, back over there, buddy. You know what color works really well too in the overcast is pink. It's chartreuse and pink are my proven colors for this type of weather, so. Oh my goodness, that was a good thump. We might have to go pink and try out that color after this uh, chartreuse for a little bit. Oh, they are hammering it, man. There's some monster bluegill in this pond too, like absolutely the biggest, the biggest bluegill I've ever seen have come out of this pond so i'm really hoping we can score one of those like one to two pound bluegill crazy thing about these ponds that we're fishing there's also some monster bass in here so it's one thing i always got to be cautious of is catching one of these texas giants and making sure i'm not running four pound line at that time <laughs> all right let's get some straight out casts I also brought some other jigs that we can use, like an underblade, a little uh, crappie jig style, so in case we want to get out here and try to target that. But for the meantime, I'm going to keep on chucking this around. I might get to the other side of the pond, try to fish that other grass line right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Let's see if we can land him, boys. Oh, why is he pulling so much? No, no, don't come up. Please, please, please. No, 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 no. Oh, why? Oh, dude, this is... I'm so, come on, please, yes, yes, look at the size of this fish, boys, oh my goodness, look at the size of that bluegill, oh my god, this is definitely a hybrid, this is a green sunfish hybrid, 
but look at that dinner plate size body and shape to him that is insane what a beautiful fish and he hammered that thing oh my goodness look at those colors the transitions of blues to like a turquoise the yellow belly the like broken yellow to black fins such beautiful fish man look at the size of that bigger than my hand easily bigger than my hand beautiful fish guys look at the mouth so you can easily thumb him my whole thumb can fit in his mouth I'll put you in this pocket right here so that way you don't get dirty i told you there's some big sunfish in this one and uh, there we go a nice green sunfish completely chow down on that bumpkin bug he definitely got the bumpkin in his mouth now let's go ahead and get him off the hook back in the water and see if we can get a few more man i love pan fishing this is what got me into bass fishing these these fish are fun they bite a lot they uh they're not afraid to eat and uh you can catch them in abundance and if you catch them this size it's a lot of fun as you guys can see how uh how it's reacting right there but it's time to get him unhooked and back in the water big old sunfish man he kind of pancaked out too i think with this water being so cold them coming out hitting that air and then going back in it's kind of like a shock factor so i'm gonna try to be a little bit quicker on the catch and the release process with these guys seems like if i just let it sit in this deep pocket there's potential for something to just pick it up but yeah we're already on we're already on just like that i think we got another good sunfish yeah come on buddy let's get you in oh, dude these things are so pretty here look at this one compared to the last one it's got like tiger stripes whoa that is insanely pretty and this in i don't think this is the the same type of fish that we just caught this is definitely a green sunfish because the the bottom's right here but it's more of like a pumpkin seed you see those those like you can tell by the orange and like peppery and uh green kind of transition that it has that really that orange is what makes it look like a pumpkin seed to me, but I'm not 100% sure, guys. There's always so many different types of species and hybrids, so if you guys know what this fish is, definitely let me know in the comments below. It's really pretty how it goes from this green to this blue and orange. Beautiful fish, man. See if he pancakes out like the rest of them have. Okay, he didn't pancake out. Whoa, that water's cold. Jeez. Cheapers, mister. That is some cold water. Oh my goodness, I did not know it was that cold. That's probably why these fish are so colorful and they're so just not eating. That's why they're so moving so weird. Look at that, we got something. We got something. I had to grab my hand warmer and we got, we got hooked up on something. Another bluegill. We found a little bluegill pocket. Oh yeah, this one's nice. This one's got a, a red eye. Look at that. None of these fish have been the same. This one looks more similar to the last one that we just caught, but definitely... All these fish have been different. See, buddy, he kind of pancaked out too. I think it's just shock. I think it might be colder right here than it is over there. So when they're jumping in this spot, it's like dipping in an ice chest or something. Whew, that wind's starting to kick up a little bit. I might have to swap to the other side of the pond where it's at my back instead of my front. It's starting to beat on me a little bit. Oh yeah, we're on something. What is it? What is it? It's got to be a sunfish the way it's swimming. Yeah, it is. Oh my goodness, he choked this thing. And he's been through some stuff. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. This guy, oh my goodness, that looks so fresh. <gasps> something trying to take a bite out of this guy. It must have been a turtle or something. That is insane. I've never seen that. And once again, a different style of sunfish this is like your typical bluegill with the uh, kind of violets and normal looking colors dude he chowed this thing down i have to get my pliers out for this there we go nice and easy buddy so i always carry pliers with you dude i've never seen anything like that that fish has a complete bite taken out of it <laughs> he's just gonna swim off completely fine i'm pretty sure right at his spine too that's an area where he might have even been used like as, as bait in his past life and it's catching up to him. That is insane. See ya, buddy. There it goes, completely fine. All right, so we can't just do one bait. We've caught plenty of fish on this bumpkin bug. Now I'm gonna go over to the next bait that I really wanted to try out. And that is this one right here, guys. The little chubby grubby 1.75 inch, basically 
a little grub version of a mondo worm and uh for some reason i don't know what it is about it i just like it it looks cool it's it's cute it has the right movement and look and um i feel like if you're gonna get some big fish they're gonna need a bigger lure this is definitely gonna be the one look at that overall length with the tail is definitely a lot more than 1.75 inch but curled up 1.75 inch allegedly i think they're just measuring this to be honest because this is that's probably about three inches realistically either way we are about to tie it on here we go that thing looks pretty good man that natural color this is one of my favorite colors by guggen silver and green pumpkin a little bit of blue flake ah oh, it just naturally looks natural imagine that all right let's try by this edge right here Whew, this thing swims so cool it's hard to see right here but it's just kind of like a little it's it almost swims like a chubby grubby it, no it really just has like a nice little curl tail grub look which is by far one of my favorite baits of all time it's one of my first baits that i used to just buy as many as i could at, at dick sporting goods gonna get some really good bass on these little tiny lures for some reason someone just hammered it like i said though anything that's gonna hit this thing is gonna have to be a little bit bigger oh that's something good that's something good that's a bass that's a bass baby follow it all the way to the edge yep you did not expect that did you buddy oh that's a good one too not a huge one but it's a good one oh yeah they are definitely biting these little tiny lures look at that guys that is a good sized bass for that little tiny lure and he is eating good too you can tell a real thick guy on that guy that is a nice bass right there man chubby grubby with the biggest fish so far man let's go People always ask me around this time of the year, what should I be throwing to get fish? It's cold, what can I get them on? And honestly, I always recommend downsizing and uh, never even be afraid to go this small like pan fishing. Cause I don't know about you guys, but when I get out here to fish, it's not to break a personal record every single time I fish. It's mostly just to catch a fish. So putting on a lure that is gonna increase the chances of me catching a fish during these cold months when the fish are really slow, these, these lakes are getting really cold, in some places they're even frozen, you really have to downsize and just catch anything that's willing to bite, honestly. And uh, in between those little bites, you might get yourself a big bite like that bass. So you just have to adapt and adjust. And once again, that's kind of how I started bass fishing was starting with panfish, you work your way up. What I'm doing is just throwing it out there right now, letting it sit and just dragging along the bottom. When I reel, it kind of helps hop off the ground, and I'm assuming that's when these fish are seeing that bait. Yeah, we get, we're on one. We're on one. We're on one. We're on one. That's a good bass. Got to fight him out with this light line. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Be nice. Be nice. Don't break off the chubby grubby. I don't want to high stick them, but I have to just flip them, flip them with the ultralight. All right, there we go. That is our biggest fish of the day for sure. Another one on that chubby grubby man. It seems like these bass like the chubby grubby. Look at that. He tried to take it off the hook. He was trying to slurp that bad boy up. Whew! It is getting nippy out here though. I'm gonna get him unhooked real quick. Get him back in the water. Like barely pinned. Barely pinned him, man. That's wild. One, one and a half pounds. Yeah, they're doing that pancake because it's so cold right here on the edge. I don't even want to put my hands in the water. That's how cold it is. All right, let's double check this line. Double check this lure. I think we're good on all bouts, man. This little swing head's nice. This is honestly the first time I've ever tried it and tied it, and uh, I'm digging it. Someone said you need to throw stuff like this with uh, crappie setups. I decided to listen to them, and uh, I'm, I'm digging it. It's got a little bit more action, and it can definitely... You can keep that, that fish pinned a little bit more because it kind of adjusts with the hook, kind of moves with it. A lot of times with these little hooks, they don't pin the fish right. Or if you do pin them, you know, all they have to do is turn and, and it turns and that line's so light, the, the lure's so light, the hook's so light, uh, it just kind of unhooks the fish. 
So having the ability to keep that pivot going with the hook set definitely does make a game changer. Oh my goodness, that's a good fish. Oh, what is that? Is it just a bass? He darted. He darted like crazy. He's fighting like crazy. Whoa. Dude, this guy is a fighter right here. This is what I mean by it's nice to have a hook that can adjust with you. Oh my goodness. There we go. He turns, the hook turns. Look at this. Prime example right here. Line's tight, the hook turns wherever he turns. Keeps that fish pinned in there, man. He absolutely hammered and ran with that thing. Let's get him unhooked. Get him back in the water though. Not a big guy, but definitely a fighter. He's going to grow up to be a huge fish. I can just tell by the, the shape of his body, man. Natural football right there. Future 5, 10 pounder. See ya, buddy. I'll come back for you in the future. Well, guys, this thing is just absolutely killing it right now, but I think we've got a good idea of this setup. Let's change our setup real quick. We got panfish. We got some good sized bass. I want to see what these things can do with a little underspin. And I do have one of the paddle tails with me. So we will pull out this little underspin right here and this 2.5 inch snacky swimmer. This is gonna be our next setup. Let's go ahead and rig it up real quick. I'm not gonna lie, out of all the uh, rigs we've done so far, this one definitely looks the stupidest, <laughs> but um, we're gonna give it a go. I think it'll work. I'm kind of concerned that this, uh, this belly right here might hit the blade and uh, hopefully we can get a secure hook set with that little barb right there, man. This is definitely gonna be a testament, but hey, you don't know until you try it, and I do want to show you guys as much as I can of these baits uh, and as much about these baits as I can. <laughs> that all makes sense. All right, guys, let's get this milk money out there. We have tried toxic ways. We have tried the natural. Let's get this big boy milk money out there. It casts a lot further because it's got more weight on that jig and stuff, so we'll see how this handles. It's going to be something I have to swim a little bit more. We can definitely hop it. It's another technique I use with this stuff, but oh, we already got hammered. Oh my goodness, <laughs> if it's going to work like that, that might have been a good swap. First cast, we got absolutely hammered. Hold on, what is this? Is that what I think it is? <laughs> no way. I just caught a $15 whooper plopper, bro. It was just sitting right there. I looked down, I said, what is that? That's a, a OG whooper plopper, Blackbird edition. Whew. Look at the nasty barb on that thing, boys. I will definitely be taking that home and cleaning it up. Maybe we'll make a whole video out of that. We found ourselves a whooper plopper that we are gonna clean up and see if we can catch a fish on. So tune into that next time, boys. It's going, uh, it's gonna be nasty in there, but it's going in there. For some reason, I just looked down and I was like, what is that thing floating? Just a whooper plopper or a whopper plopper, or a whooper, whatever you guys say. Everyone always makes fun of me. Get this thing back out there. Just slow roll it to keep that drag a little tight so that way if someone hits it, it sets the hook itself versus me having a yank on it because these fish are going to have to eat this thing a little bit. It can't get the lip of the mouth with the way this hook is. It's a very, very small hook. They got to get like the roof of the mouth or the side of the inner cheek. Let's see what it looks like just swimming in real quick. Oh yeah, that is absolutely dinner plate. Like... If I was a fish and I saw that out there, we'd be eating it. But look at that cast distance too, about twice as far as the other lures. So we should be able to target a different part of the pond that we haven't been able to hit yet. Finish out the rest of the pond with this lure. Oh, no way. <gasps> That was a good fish and it, oh, my knot came undone. That's the only underspin I had too, guys. Just lost the only underspin inside, probably like a three pound bass. That is sad because I, uh, frustrated right now. Hold on, I gotta calm down. I just feel so bad now. They have a hook in their mouth and I didn't get the fish too. Like it's like just insult to injury, literally. That is a bummer right there, dude. Let's go with the pink. Pink stands out so well. 
in overcast weather. So we're gonna go with this pink jig head. It's a little bit bigger than the other jig head too. And I am gonna try to tie that swing knot that I had earlier because it seems like it worked out just a little bit better. We've tried out almost all the baits except for the fluke style bait. So let's go with the little tiny dangle dart. That looks pretty money if you ask me. I like the color transition. Adds a little bit of pink and purpley right there. I wonder if you can fish this thing like a normal little dart. Just like jerk bait it. Oh yeah, that thing has got some crazy jerk bait movement. I bet you if you just had like a tiny little EWG hook, you can do some crazy finesse fishing with that. Oh, bluegill took it right there at the end. <laughs> He folded it all the way up to the end, dude. Another monster bluegill. That is what I really wanted to catch today. Not even bluegill, this is a sunfish. Don't yell at me, guys. But look at the size of this thing. Well, guys, there you have it. Our probably second biggest bluegill of the day. I'm gonna get him released and back in the water though, man. I think we've got a good understanding and idea of what these baits can do for you. And they can definitely land you some good fish, that is for sure. Let's get this guy unhooked. There we go. Whoa, 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 look at this bass. Half of his head is like black. I've never seen that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this. Like his body is just like right in half is black. That is so weird. I've never seen that complete color transition. Whew. All right, buddy, we'll get you unhooked and back in the water. Go. Oh, we're on something good. That is good. What is it? Oh, no, 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 no way. No way. That is a monster crappie. I really want to land this. This thing's so big. This is monster crappie. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me right now, guys? I'm so freaking out. I did not expect us to catch a crappie like this. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> That's gonna be like a two pound crappie. Oh my goodness. All on that little tiny Guggen bait, man. This thing is absolutely insane. I guess they work exactly how you want them to. Man, that thing hammered it too. That was so much fun. I love catching crappie, but I've never really hammered him on BFFs or ultra lights and that was Honestly, a game changer. So much fun. All right, buddy. Thanks for the fun. Get out of here. Well, guys, with that being said, I really don't think there's much more to test out here. We tried to show you all the baits, all the colors. I tested every bait. I've caught a fish on every single lure, and it's been an awesome last few hours out here on this pond. We got bass, we got sunfish, we got big sunfish, we got little sunfish, we got it all. And we got it all in a very short amount of time thanks to these brand new Guggen baits. So if you guys are interested in picking these things up, they will be available Black Friday if I have not posted this video by then. And uh, you can use my code right here below. Get on over there, help out the brokest Guggen of them all. And if you found today's video helpful at all, please hit that thumbs up. It does help me out a lot. And uh, think about hitting that subscribe button as well. You can always unsubscribe at any time. But with that being said, guys, that is gonna be it. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch y'all on our next adventure. Peace.